Praise God. Did you bring your Bibles? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, if you did, can you open them to Ephesians 5, please? And if you didn't, we'll have it on the screen for you. That's okay. Tonight, I have the opportunity and the, and the blessing and the, and the honor from my pastor to be before you, and I want to thank him for that and thank her for that. Uh, it is an honor to be before my family tonight. I want to talk about being led. And, you know, these are things, again, I'm real good about reiterating things that have been preached previously, but that's okay. Because a full measure of faith didn't come the first time you heard it. Yes. You know, so we've got to hear these things again, and, and we will get a grasp of it and further revelation from it, and we're going to grow. Amen? Yes. So Ephesians 5, it would help if I was there, verse 17 and it says, Wherefore, be, not, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. All right? Now, I should have started in 16. Pardon me. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Now, I want to read it from the, the Weast. All right? It, it lays it out perfectly, and actually, I should have started in 15. You'll forgive the speaker tonight. Be constantly taking heed, therefore, how accurately you are conducting yourselves. Not as unwise ones, but as wise ones. See, you're wise. Whether you, whether you think so or not, you're wise. All right? Buying up for yourselves the opportune time because the days are pernicious or destructive. Now, I wanna, what we want to see there is the words accurately and redeeming the time. All right? You've got to take heed of how accurately you're conducting yourself. And how that fits into being led is that if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you are accurate, right? Because he is the teacher. Yes. He will guide you into all truth, correct? So, you want to be accurate. Pastor Michelle spoke some in prayer meeting about, she used the word synchronization. Does anybody remember that? How there, and the unity. Now, what I thought, when I think of synchronization, have you ever watched watch movements? Like to see the inside of a watch and the gears and they're all moving and they're all moving together. And they're all meshing together. That's us. Amen. Now if we want to push forward into the things that God has for us, we've got to be led. But we have to be in unity because I've said it before, you know, it's, it's so important you know, the man of God bringing us the word, and then you've got him, you know, you've got Jesus, then you have the pastor, then you have the body, right? And you have the shepherd and the under-shepherd, and then you have the body. And, and if you think of it, you know, in your body, this finger is just as important as this arm, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to go around without your pinky finger. You could do it, but it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to maximize, Right? So it's so important that the littlest gear in a watch continues to work because if it binds, then it puts stress on all the other gears. Does that make sense? So do you see where synchronization and unity is so key? Yeah. And being led, if we're, if we're all listening to the spirit on the inside of us because you have a part to play and you have a part to play and you have a part to play, they're not the same, yeah. right? We all have different paths. But if we're all going in the same direction, right, and we're all in unity and we're all synchronized together, then there is nothing, nothing that can stand in our way. Amen. Because like Rusty was talking about, I, I was reading this earlier, and I like this part in the second paragraph. There will be no spinning the wheels or just staying in the same spot or rut. You'll gain traction and come up out of the rut you've been in. We're moving forward. In unity, right? In synchronization. We're coming out of it. I don't know what you've got going on. I don't know what you're facing, but you're coming out of it. Yes. Okay? Because that's, that's what God said. Yes. And this is as much being led. You believe this word, you're being led. Yes. When you say gain is mine, you're being led. Because that's what the word of the Lord was to this body. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, verse 18 says... But be constantly controlled by the Spirit. 
So if we're going to live accurately and we're going to redeem the time, we've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Plain and simple. You know, I, I look at it like it's, it's like this. If, if I'm going to do something, if, if I want to be led, I just have to be led. Now hear me. Let, me. let me use an example of running. When I was running with Pastor, he said, your body wants to run. It knows how to run. Just let it run. Okay? But you're never going to run until you take the first step. So you can sit and say, well, I want to be led, I want to be led, I want to be led. Just be led. You know the voice, and we'll get into this. You know the voice of the Spirit on the inside of you. Let it control you. But see, you have to, you have to renew your mind to that fact, right? Because I remember also being on a run. You were there, John. And we were making, we were making comments about how, well, I just, he said, guys, what are you thinking about? Well, you know, we just... I want to be a better husband, and I want to be a better this, and I want to be a better... And he stopped, and he just looked at us. And it was, it was loving, but it, it was correction time. And he said, you know what? You need to quit trying and just do it. Quit talking about it and just do it. All right? So I'm not saying anybody in here is just talking about, well, I want to be led, I want to be led. But if, if you're in your head about it, you're not being controlled by the, your spirit. And we'll get into that, too. So if... The body knows how to run. Just run. You know how to be led. You listen and you follow. Yes. Right? And sometimes, sometimes following can be hard, but it was, it was in times when I was out and I, and I had a lot of questions about what was going on. And I was asking the Lord, what about this and what about that? And he said, you just continue to follow. You continue to follow. Amen. And the more that I have meditated on that, that's... I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes. God. Now, I follow the leaders that God has placed in my life. Yes. I follow what my pastor says. Yes. Because he hears from God right. <laughs> for, for this body. But for me, I, you know, and he has heard for me about things, but that's not his primary goal. Right. It's not his primary job. His primary job is to mature me yes. and mature yes. you yes. to the place that we hear yes. from God directly in our spirit. Because, see, here's the thing. You get out there and your body knows how to run. Don't worry about the form. You can perfect the form. But you'll never be able to perfect the form until you get out there and start running. Just the same way that our pastor and God, they, they perfect us, right? They mature us. But we'll never get to that point. We'll never get to that constant controlled leading unless we take the step to do it. And, you know, and, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying anybody isn't doing that, but you have to check yourself. Okay, am I being constantly led in every area of my life? Can I honestly say every area? No, I can't. Because there's things I still have a hold on that I think I need to take care of. Well, okay. God is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. They're not going to come in there and scream at me and tell me to, to turn it over. <laughs> right? So, I would, I would guess that there's... Some of us in here that might be in the same boat. Just be honest. Because he has the plan for you. And it may not make sense to your head. In fact, it probably won't. But it'll make sense to your spirit. Right? Let's look at John 14. Because we, we know his voice. Okay? John 14, and we'll start in verse 16. And these are the words of Jesus. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seems him not, neither know him not. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. All right? That word another is another of the very same kind, almost identical. Right? That's what Pastor Michelle taught us. He will be just like me. Jesus is saying the spirit in you will be just like me. How can we lose? Amen. <laughs> he, 
he is on the inside of you. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's directing your path. Your job is to listen and to follow and be led. And don't be, don't be like the horse that digs their hooves into the ground because he's not going to jerk on the reins. He's not. He's just not. You've got to be sensitive to his leadings. The Bible says that God would like us to even be trained by his eye, right? I, now, this, is, <laughs> this isn't the same context, but I know there were times when all my dad had to do was just look at me. I was about, I would just stop what I was doing. <laughs> In this sense, God wants you to, you just, okay, I see that, God. I know you, yes, Father, I'll do that. That's how sensitive he wants us to these leadings because it's so important to our growth. It's not only important to your personal growth, it's important to the growth of this body and the direction this fellowship is going because there are unfathomable things for this body, right? I mean, think, I would like to know the end from the beginning. I really would, but I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Neither could you. You just have to understand that you are placed at the right place at the right time. Yes. This fellowship, if you're here, because I know many of us in here, you would say, this is my church and God directed me to this church. You need something. You need something this church can offer you that no other church could offer you. Look, and, uh, you know, and, and I tried to deny it for a while and it just it, it wasn't going to happen. My answers are here. Yes, my answers are here. But the revelation that I get from them come here. <laughs> right? So this is my church body. This is, where, this is where I've learned to be led by the Holy Spirit. See, we have to learn. And get out there and you take the step. And you've got leadership. You've got pastors here that can help you. Right? They can help you perfect. They can help you mature in things. Bring him questions. I've brought him questions before. I've brought pastor questions before. Okay, am I, am I hearing this right? It's okay to bounce it off of people that you trust. Am I, it, it, pastor, do you think this lines up with this? And, you know, he's told me, yes, I do. And then there's been other times he goes, you know what? I think you might be missing it here. Let's course correct and be sensitive and be teachable, be coachable, right? And just trust your pastors. OK, because they hear from God and they know the word and they're going to help you because they have our best interest in mind. They really do. You are and, and I as well. We're all sheep in this fold. Right. And we have excellent shepherds. They want they want you to succeed more than they want to succeed. I truly believe that. Because of the sacrifices that I've seen through the years, they want you to succeed. They want me to succeed. Because it brings glory to God. Amen? Now, let's look at something here. John 17, 17. Again, you can probably quote it by heart. But if you want to know the right leading, you've got to know the word. Because the Spirit... The Spirit, will, well, the Spirit will never violate the Word. Okay? The Holy Spirit will never, ever violate the Word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Get that in your spirit. This is truth. And Rusty mentioned it. God cannot lie. It's impossible. This is truth. So if you're being led by the word, by your spirit, that's, that's the truth. That's the, the, that's the reality of the situation. I mean, you can use, I can use Carrie as an example that the doctors would say one thing, but the truth was what the word said. Amen. Like Rusty was talking about in, in your finances. They might say one thing. But what's the Bible say? It, it all goes. Remember when uh, when Dr. Pat was here and Pastor had been preaching previous to that, and she even touched on it. What does the Word say? What does the Word say? That has to be our frame of mind 
in, in, in any situation that might be contrary to what you're believing or what you're standing on. If something comes and it's tr because symptoms like to talk, right? Um, circumstances like to talk. Okay, but what's the word say? And that's why you've got to know the word to get the right leading. If you don't know the word on the situation, then you're, you're, you're apt to be led in the wrong direction. But if you know the word on the situation, you can, okay, I know that leading. And I know that leading is leading me in the direction of the word. That's got to be the Holy Spirit. It leave, it, there's no question, okay? Look at Psalm 119, 128. It says, therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. All right? This word is right. Concerning all things, this word is right. You can't go wrong. Amen. And again, I know you know this, but you've got to have it here. It's got to move from here <laughs> to here. We can't just know it. We've got to, we've got to live it, breathe it have it so engrafted, like we talked about before, on us that nothing can move us off of it. No circumstance, no report, no negative balance. You know, I, it can't move you. It can't move you. I remember one time I came to church, and this has been many years ago, and, you know, I'll just be honest, we were struggling. And, you know, I sat, <laughs> I sat in, in the office with Pastor, and I'm sure I looked, look down and, and, and mopey. He goes, what's your problem? What's going on with you? And I, and I told him, I said, Pastor, you know, you know, we're struggling, and I don't know what we're going to do. And you, great words of faith coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but I was being honest. I was just letting him know where I was at. And he goes, well, your, your situation doesn't change the word. Your circumstance doesn't change what the word says. You know, and, it, and he wasn't being hard. But he was trying to get you to, to remember, he's trying to get me to remember, you're still, you're still who God says you are, no matter the circumstance. And, and you know what? That's what I meditated on. Okay, I got to get in the scriptures and I got to find out what God says. Because sitting over in the corner and pouting and feeling sorry for myself was just digging me a deeper hole. You ever been there? <laughs> All right. Let's go to Second Peter. Because the word is truth, okay? If that's where your answer is. And that's how you're going to be led. Second Peter chapter 1. Seventeen through nineteen. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. That more sure word of prophecy is laying in your lap right now. That's what you have, and it's more sure than the audible voice of God. I can't say that I have ever heard the audible voice of God. That's okay. I've heard him here. And I know I've heard him here. And that's how you're led. Okay? And that's what we'll continue to do. So, you know, I, I kind of want to ask you some questions that you need to know your why. And when I say that, why are you doing something? Why do you want to be led? Well, look at Romans 8, 14. And it says, the true children of God are those who let God's spirit lead them. Now, Rusty touched on this some too. You are a child of God, right? You, like, and like pastors have talked about, this is of plexiglass. This table is of wood. You are of God, right? So this says... The true children of God, which are you, are those who let God's Spirit lead them. It's expected of us as children of God to be led by the Spirit. Amen. It, that's just what's expected. Yes. 
And we want to be like him. See, Jesus was led. And that is our ultimate, uh, our ultimate, uh, what's the word? I heard it. Somebody said, example. Thank you. He is our example. He's our ultimate example. And if he had to be led, you got to be led. I got to be led in every area. Remember when, when uh, Sister Pat was here and she talked about being led and she talked about uh, the car lease that she had and the, the, uh, the car guy called her and, and wanted to, to hook her up with a good deal. And it was a good deal, but she told him, you know what, I'm going to have to pray about that first. I'm going to have to find out the leading on that. And Pastor put it in his notes and he's talked to us about this before. She prayed and sought the Holy Spirit about a car. You know, those things that we just take for granted. We need to pray about it. We need to seek the leading of it. Because you want, the, you want your car. Amen. You want your house. Yes. You want to live where you're supposed to live. Yes. You know, I, <laughs> could, I, could I honestly tell you that, oh, what it have been, 2010, 2011, that I thought I should live in DeSoto? Absolutely not. <laughs> no way, no how. I'm living in Lawrence, home of the Jayhawks. I'm loving it. It's great. But the more we would drive here, and the more that we would come here, I'd, we'd start looking at houses. And I'd say, you know, I wonder if we should live here. I wonder this. I wonder that. And one day, it just, we were talking to Pastor about it. And, you know, it, it wouldn't go away. That, that scratch wouldn't go away. So that should tell you something right there. It's not just you. Because I didn't really want to live here. And again, it was one of those, why, why, why am I sensing I need to live here? Show me the end from the beginning. Well, that's not going to happen. So I had to just take the step. And we talked to Pastor, and we said, well, it just seems right. And then he talked about Luke. The book of Luke was written because it seemed good, right? It was a leading. And I didn't really, I didn't fully comprehend it. I didn't understand it. See, at that time, I thought being led by the Spirit was was, ooh, you know, and, and I was, it was super, it, it is supernatural, but it was just this outstanding, spectacular display. No, it was these small leadings. It was just in everyday life. That's how you're led. Well, so we end up here, and, you know, did, did, I, have any recol- did I have any knowledge that, you know, my daughters would, would go to school here, and graduate, and, and Lexi would graduate from high school here and, and go on, and she's going to college. Did I, did I have any idea that, that you were going to end up working in Shawnee? Did I have any idea that I was going to be part of the church the way that I am now? No, I didn't. Absol- I, I can't stand here and tell you that I did. But I had, and we had, the leading to move here. Now, I'm not... I'm not saying anybody else needs to move here. No, that's not what I'm saying. You, <laughs> she said, whoo. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but what I am saying is, what is he talking to you about? What's he leading you to do? Because that's your path. See, my path was to come here, was leading to DeSoto. You know, and, and thank God that we did. Because we could have we played that off. And, you know, yeah, maybe that was just me. And, and no, we'll just stay here and dig our heels in and stiff our neck. Well, <laughs> I don't believe that, that, that I would be walking in the blessing that I'm walking in now. I, I know I wouldn't be. Because the provision is on the path, right? Your provision is on your path. Be led on your path and your provision will always be there. Amen? So let's look at Galatians 5. In verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right? The Amplified says it like this. I say walk and live in the Holy Spirit. 
responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. Now, these cravings and desires, they can be sinful activity, but not necessarily are they always sinful activity. All right? Because, see, I know me. I know my flesh likes to coast. It likes ease. Anybody else? The flesh doesn't want to push through, right? But we got to push. If we're going to go where this fellowship is headed, you've got to push. You've got to push, you've got to push past the carnal mind, and you've got, to, you've got to be led and guided and directed by your spirit. Because that's, that's where the victory is found. Amen. Right? Look, the flesh doesn't want to fight through anything. It doesn't want to push any doors open. It just doesn't want to. I, <laughs> there wasn't, there, not too long ago, I, uh, I faced a, a, an issue in my body. And uh, some of the, the pills that I was on to help <laughs> with the issue uh, really sedated me. And, man, I'd lay there. And certain just simple tasks that she would ask me, she wasn't nagging me. She wasn't telling me. She was just asking me, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to get up off this couch and do that. And it's, that's not my, really, Believe it or not, that's not my nature. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> but no, really, it, it was, it, and I could sense it. And, and, and I could, I, I just, I, ugh, I didn't want to do it. It's my flesh. I didn't want to push. But here, here, when you get into, see, because this, it takes effort. It takes effort to get in this word. But once you do, it takes, it took you effort to get to church tonight. There, there might have been some of you that you would, your flesh wanted to stay on the couch. But you got up and you made a spiritual decision and you pushed through. And now your spirit's like, all right, here we go. Right? And you told your flesh what you were going to do. You, you're the one in authority. And you got to tell your flesh what to do. Now, I should have told my flesh, you're getting up off this couch. I didn't. I laid there. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, a human. I'm real, right? No. But listen, you've got to push. Because look at 1 Corinthians 2, and, and we'll see some things here. Because you are not who you used to be. Amen. You're not that old lazy guy laying on the couch. That's not you. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, <clears throat> verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, uh, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they're foolish unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, you and I have not received the Spirit of the world. That's so key. That's not what you received. Instead, you've received the Spirit of God. That's what's living on the inside of you. That's what we have to allow us to lead us and drive us and push us. That, see, because when you came to this church, you found your purpose. Many of you did. Let that, let that drive you. Let the Spirit of God, let the Word of God, let that purpose. Because you found your purpose when you got in the Word. Right? I didn't, ha I didn't know my purpose until I was shown who I was in Christ. Amen. Because when you got born again, your name changed. You remember, you remember Abram and how... He changed, God changed his name to Abraham to get him to see the way he was seeing, right? Your name changed as well. My name, your name, your name. You're no longer Carrie. You're Carrie in Christ. Amen. You're no longer Rusty. You're Rusty in Christ. Everybody else, if you're a believer, if you're born again, take your name and then put in Christ. Yes. That's you. Amen. That's the real you. That's what's being led. Okay, does that 
Does that make sense? So it, it, it all harkens back to your position, like Pastor Michelle was talking about, your position in Christ. If you're in the right position, which you are, when you know those in Christ realities, and you're in position, you're in an excellent, excellent position to be led because you know who you are. And if you know who you are, you bypass this and you go directly to this. Because what this is talking about here, Paul states that if we insist on living in the flesh, now here's one that is so key for me, that means living in your head. Pastor, constantly, well, not as much anymore, but he used to tell me, you're in your head, get out of your head. Especially with the situation that we faced in your body, he was constantly telling me, get out of your head. Because the doctor would want to come and tell you things, and that starts here. Well, where does the enemy play with us and mess with us? In our head. Get out of your head. All right? If we stay in our head, you're not going to receive the things of God because they're foolishness to your head. That's what the word says right here. They've got to be discerned by the spirit. That's, that's why you've got to be led by your spirit, not your head. If you're led by your head, you're making decisions out of you. If you're led by your spirit, you're making decisions directly from the word and directly from the father. Right? That's, and, and they may not make sense to your head. <laughs> like I said, it didn't make sense to my head to move here. But it made sense here. I, does, that, does that build your faith? I mean, does that, do you see things that you've made decisions of in the past where you were led by your spirit, but you had to bypass your head? It doesn't change. It doesn't change. That's why you can't let... You can't let people pressure you to make a decision. That's why pastor says he won't move fast, especially if somebody tells him he has to move fast. He's not being stubborn. He's not allowing them to put pressure on him to get in his head. He wants to make the spiritual decision. I want to make the spiritual decision because that's the right decision. That's the truth. That's the truthful decision. That's the one that God will honor. Okay? The things of the Spirit, they include leadings and promptings of the Spirit. And very often, they seem foolish to the natural mind. Okay? So that's why you've got to know the Word. Because you'll, you'll reason. And you get in that natural reasoning, well, that doesn't make sense. Because if I do that, then this might happen. And this will happen. Well, who said? What did the Word say? What's the word leading you to do? You, and you bypass that natural reason. Look at Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, and we'll start in verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is in enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So in order to live in the flesh, your mind must be habitually dominated by the flesh. Right? I mean, if, if, if that's how... You, and, and that was me, not saying anybody else, but that was me before Christ. Always doing what the flesh wanted to do. Yeah. Habitually, right? Yeah. I mean, making it a point to do what the flesh wanted to do. <laughs> and you know what I got? Death. Right. I mean, just like, just like everybody else, right? right. Yeah. But it was because I was habitually dominated by the flesh. Right. And so this, I was always in my head. I always knew what I was going to do because I knew best because I was dominated by the flesh. But in order to live in the spirit, your mind must be habitually dominated by the spirit. So that's why Pastor Tony teaches on it so beautifully in, in Romans where you've got to renew your mind every day. It's not a one time event. It's not a 10 time event. It's a daily event. You get up every day and renew your mind to the fact that you're a new creature in Christ. You get up every day and renew your mind to the fact that you're the healed of the Lord. 
You get up every day and renew your mind to the fact that I'm going to be led by the Spirit today. You get up every day and renew your mind to the fact that you're the one in authority. Right? But you've got to do it every day. Because it's, 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 it just takes a little bit, just a little bit of, of relaxing the grip. And that's all the enemy needs to come in and, and, and get you in your head. But if you don't relax the grip of, the, of, of, of what you've got on the word and the revelation that you have, he has no answer for the word. He, can't, he has no answer for a man or woman that lives out of their spirit. Right? Because you're living from here. You're living from here. He, he, he has no access here. Right? We've talked about that. He has no access to your spirit. It's a closed loop system. And why can't he get to your spirit? Because you've been bought by the blood, right? It's the covenant. It's a blood covenant that you and I belong to. The enemy has no blood. He can't get into that covenant. You can't lose. You cannot lose. (laughs) Rusty touched on it. God gave his only son for you, right? He swore a blood oath for you, right? He gave you the Holy Spirit for you. You are seated with Christ in the seat of the overcomer, right? You can't lose. (laughs) You can, you've won. You've already won. So now we walk it out. And how do we walk it out? By the leading of the Spirit, okay? So let's look at 2 Corinthians 10 and we'll, I have no idea what time it is. I'm sure it's early. (laughs) 755. Hey, 755? We'll get to eight. <laughs> You're all like, man, I wonder, I wonder how short we're going tonight, right? <laughs> I know, I hear you guys talk. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, the natural mind will always try to get you over into reason, always try to get you over into natural human reason. Why you can't do something. Why this, your age this, your education this. Your bank account this. And it makes sense to your head, right? I mean, it it just does. But it doesn't make sense here. You know when you're being, you know the voice. I believe, I believe and have enough trust in here with you all that you know the voice of the Spirit speaking on the inside of you. Don't override that voice. Don't override that leading Don't get over into natural reasoning because when you enter into that natural human reasoning, then you lay down the mighty weapons. And then you're left to rely on weak, ineffective weapons up here. And you might think you're just as strong as you as as anybody else, and you might think you know best. And you might. You know what? Sometimes this and this will line up. I mean, sometimes that that's because, you know. you're, you, you have human intellect. You're, 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 you're a smart person. And oftentimes, it'll line up. But more often than not, you'll be like, ah, I shouldn't do that because of this. But right here, you know that you know that's what you're supposed to do. Follow that leading. And don't, don't be like me. <laughs> don't get flipped out. When you're, you're being led and you think you know where it's going, don't start, don't get so far ahead that you start making plans out of your head. Because it's easy to do. I've been led in certain situations where I start down the path and I know, okay, oh, I bet God's wanting me to do this. I bet God's wanting me to do that. And I'm, and I'm two or three steps ahead of him. And then, he, then I have to back up because he never asked me to do it. Does that... Does that make sense? See, you want to be you want to be in that synchronization. You want to be right on time, and I think we are. And and we're growing into that because when God moves, you want to move. When the Spirit wants you to move, you move. 
just like in the Word. As you're quick to obey, He's quick to respond. As you're quick to obey the Spirit, He's quick to respond. And like I said, the provision is on the path. It's on your path. And he's, that's what he's leading. Whatever he's leading you to is ultimately good. Because that's who he is. He's good, right? So, if we're faithful to the word, right? And we've got to be full of the word in order to be led by the spirit. Because the spirit always testifies of Jesus who is the word. So when pastor talks about being full and being led, be full of the word. Amen. Be faithful to the word. Because see, and I'll end it with, with this. I'll get back to the, the running analogy. I started running a couple of reasons. One, I was horribly out of shape. And two, it meant I got to spend more time with my pastor. Because that's who speaks into my life. Well, the byproduct of that was, and I didn't go into it with, with this in mind, but I had really high blood pressure, and I didn't know it. But I started running. And a byproduct of that was my blood pressure dropped, which is a blessing. I mean, it's, it's normal. It, it, it's, it's where it's supposed to be. If you're faithful to the word, not because, not because you're trying to get anything, not because it's, because it's not about things. You want to be faithful to the word. You want to honor him, and he'll honor you. The byproduct of it is that you'll abound with blessings. Yes. That's, that's just what happens. Does that, do you see that? So we want to be faithful. We want to be full of this word, and we want to be faithful to it. And as we are, we'll be led by the Spirit into more. Because, as Pastor says, more is coming. That's, and that's another Holy Spirit direction. You've got to expect that. Expect more, because that's what he said. Amen. Expect gain. Yes. That's what he said. Expect victory, yes. because that's what he has for us. Amen? Amen. Well, have you received from the word tonight? Yes. Praise God. If you want to stand to your feet. I have one quick announcement for you, ladies. Ladies of faith. Come hungry, and not for spiritual food and physical food. The gentlemen have decided that they would like to serve you. So there's your surprise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'll be helping serve, and we'll, we'll have a good time. Amen? Amen? Pastor Steele will be here this weekend. I know he's looking forward to seeing everybody here. I know I'm looking forward to, to hearing what God has to say through our pastor. Yeah. I'm excited. So I just want to encourage you. We'll have our full slate of services on Sunday, 10 and 6. So we'll be sure to see you then. Amen. Amen. So grab the hand of your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. The, vision the vision of this church is to be.